welcome you to the Photoverse workshop of the Race in the Marketplace Research Network. The objective of this workshop is to explore a research method, the Photoverse, but also to engage in a discussion on race and market within the Parisian context. The, the workshop will have like several phases. The first phase is this morning, we will have a discussion about what we want to do and we will try to learn a little bit more about each other. This afternoon, at noon, we will go for a visit. We've got three groups. One group will go to the 5th district, another group will go to the 18th district, and the last group will go to the 19th district. In the afternoon, those groups will visit those districts and they will try to look at issues at the intersection of race and market. Tomorrow morning, they will, we will start at 9 a.m. again, and then we will just discuss the different picture that we have taken today. One thing that really caught my attention was Indian shops here. When I look at the down, then a lot of Indian shops are being like, you know, invaded into this area. And especially this one caught my attention because Indians at the same time, Silk, silk pal uh, Palace is something very traditional. I think Palace and Silk, that kind of represent about representing their, uh, their culture itself. So I think that there is a lot of contrasting feeling coming out of this picture as well. So that's why I picked this up. Many Africans who were working here, who have family here, children who were born here were French. Some of them were fighting because they were still undocumented, and they were fighting to get papers. At one point, the Africans decided to take the matter in their own hands, and they invaded a church. Then a following month, I think, or two months later, the, uh, the undocumented from the Chinese community uh, invaded a gymnasium. And for a few years, they were all invaded church, invading churches or gymnasiums or, you know, spaces like that to get the papers. The Africans in this neighborhood started it at this church. Another beer from La Goudour called Zulu Time. But you know, yeah, like yeah. I said, this is not African owned, this is French owned. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah. do have an African beer. Hmm. They have Goudour and Zulu Time. Oh, Zulu Time, okay. I'll come here and get and try their Zulu beer. Yeah, I don't know what kind of. Uh, and I think one of the things, I think just as you said, yeah. black people create. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this creativity comes from community, it's not like one person, but it comes from community, but then one person puts ownership on it, and suddenly it's like, I own this, and now you can't use it. So once copyright comes in. So a creator and those who own it, and it's not always the same community, and that's the problem. Been here for 20 years. Yeah, 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 20 years. 20 years here, this time. other African shops. Um, I just wanted to note again that we learned that the 18th hour and moment uh, had multiple communities. Um, I tried to capture here um, the white mannequins, the African jewelry and cloth, the window and the mirror inside, um, the shadows um, that are created from um, the necklace onto um, the mannequin. Um, in terms of what, what's really happening here, I saw a kind of a, a blurred and mediated marketing or representation of African culture. And I also really was paying attention to the interaction of blackness and whiteness, literally through the shadow on the mannequin, um, but also um, through the relationship between African fabric um, and a white uh, mannequin. Um, and, and also that made me ask questions about, about who, who is the market here, who's the client here? 
So is it a white tourist? Is that why there's a, a white mannequin here? Um, or is it just tourists of all sorts? Do Africans actually shop here? Or do Africans shop elsewhere? But what it made me think about was how, as a black person, I don't see myself, right? I don't see myself wearing um, this African cloth. It's a white person wearing it. Um, and it made me think about the ways that media in the US and also in France has not represented black people that often. So we had a discussion about how commercials um, historically didn't show a lot of people of color. Années, on, 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 vit, on visite toute l'Afrique. Mm -hmm. euh, la, la vie ici, c'est ce, un village. Ouais. La vie ici se passe très très bien. Les gens sont acceptés et ils s'entendent très très bien. On se connaît tous. Enfin, oui, oui, non, oui, 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 ça se sent. Ça se ouais. sent quand on est là. Oui, oui, oui. So I, I love the composition and the colors, but then the other thing for me, the way it's marking, I don't know what the painting is supposed to be telling us but it's telling us something about the location. Maybe that it's, you know, African or ethnic or artistic. And then because of the tour we did with Kevi, the way Picasso figures in sort of translating African art to the, to the New World and, and, to Par and to Paris and to France, that, that I just got that reference at the same time. I think that wanna be multicultural, wanna show the diversity, superficially through micro graffiti and consumption and all that, I, my hypothesis, I don't know if it's true, is that it's limited to kind of college educated, center left people. And there's a tension that I think we haven't uh, discussed that is glowing in the US with, with Trump, but it's also going to these neighborhoods and this photography. I think we are also erasing this uh, tension between the, the white Frenchness, and again, this Breton, there's all these differences, but and, and, the, and the new bodies of color that are these this, uh, former colonial people coming here. And I think all the pictures that other people took is what we don't see in this picture, who is absent. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also something that, uh, that we haven't discussed much and I, I wonder. Mm -hmm.